Hello, and welcome to solving Sokotoa, the whole triangle. I guess it's not exactly what it says there, Sokotoa solving the whole triangle. Whatever. All right, now, I expect at this point that you already know how to use Sokotoa, and the next thing that your teacher will usually ask you to do is to solve the whole triangle. So instead of just being given an x and an 8, in this case, what they're going to do is they are going to give you no x. So. What they've given you here is they've given you an angle and a side. And you have to solve the whole triangle, which means solving all of the sides and all of the angles. Now, how are you going to do that? Well, I do it like this. I use Sokotoa. That's what I do first. And then I use Pythagorean theorem. And then I use add to 180 degrees. Now. I do it in this order and I teach it in this order because some of the students get confused when they add to 180 degrees first or when they use Pythagorean theorem first. So some of you, I mean most of you hopefully at this point can look at this thing and you go okay, whoops, not on my pencil yet. So you can say okay that is 30 degrees right there so I know that this angle down here must be 60. And you're right, but if you put two angles in here then Students sometimes have a harder time knowing which side is O. If I've only got one angle, then I can see that this is the, my opposite. Now, next problem. What do I want to solve for? So I'm using Sokotoa to solve for a side. Which side do you want to solve for? H or A? Your call. Doesn't matter. I would probably solve for A, which is just because I'd like to use Pythagorean theorem afterwards, and I'd like to add instead of subtract. I'm just getting picky. You can solve for A and H, whatever you like. OK, I'm solving for A, though. So what do I have to use? I have to use tan. So the tan of 30 degrees equals A over O. Nope, toa, O over A. So 8 over whatever this A side is. I don't know what it is. I'm going to solve for A. Now, how do I solve for A? Well, I do a quick cross multiply here. So let's just say this is a fraction over 1, because, well, it is. And I'm going to multiply this up, and I'm going to divide this down. Now, if that move didn't make any sense to you, then go back and watch the other video. Go back and check out the video on solving for a side, and it explains what just happened there. What I really did is I multiplied both sides by A and divided both sides by tan 30, but I don't want to show all that work anymore, because I'm getting so good at this. And so are you, right? A equals. Well, what is A equals? Let's go to your calculator. A is equal to 13. 0.856 and well because it rounds up and I usually round to one decimal place I'm going to call it 13.9 so this is 13.9 but because it was 13.856 that's some pretty heavy rounding now how can I avoid making a mistake on my next line well here's what my next line is going to be I'm going to solve for this H side now, I use these other two sides, and I remember that by Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or this h side squared, the hypotenuse is always equal to the other two sides squared. So 8 squared plus 13.9 squared. Now, I'm not actually going to use 13.9. Because what I just punched into my calculator is still in my calculator. So don't always just clear your calculator. Leave the numbers in there, because you might want to use them again. I've got 13.856406, blah, 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 and I'm going to take that number and square it. It goes exactly to 192. Now, I'm going to add 8 squared and hit equals, and I get 256. And then I'm going to take the square root of that. And ta-da, h goes, OK, you know what? I'm actually going to show these two steps. So h squared was 256. When you added those together, and then just to remind you, I take the square root of both sides, and h is then equal to 16 exactly. So if I had used 13.9, I wouldn't have got 16 exactly. So this side is exactly 16. How did I know this side was going to be exactly 16? Well, be from the triangle. This triangle has 30 degrees in here. The sine of 30 is equal to a half, which means that the O over the H is always going to be a half. So this opposite side is always half of the hypotenuse when you've got 30 degrees. So I already knew that. But you need to show your work anyways. OK, last step. Hopefully, you do not have to show your work for this. It would be a crazy teacher that makes you, uh, don't
don't tell them I called them that, but that makes you show 80 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 30 degrees equals 60 degrees. Because seriously, 30, 90, you got to know that this is 60. Okay, done. Showed my work, got an answer. Showed my work, got an answer. And well, got an answer. I don't usually give a mark for showing work here. Now, just to remind you, you don't have to use these three steps. I just find them the easier to remember for most students. If you want to use tan to get this side and then go back to this side and use sine, I could have done sine here. So, and I'd still get H. So if you want to, you can use Sokotoa twice here. Okay, next I'm going to take a triangle that has two sides instead. So video's not done. We're halfway there. Okay, here we go again. So, in this case, I have two sides. I have an angle. I don't know what that angle is. So once again, I'm going to use Sokotoa first. Now I'm going to use Sokotoa to solve for an angle this time, but it goes the same way. I label with O, I label with A, I label with H, and I get uh, O and A gives me tan. So the tan of theta is equal to 7 over 7. Now, yes, you should be able to do this in your head or have it memorized already, but if you don't, well, that's okay, because most teachers make you show your work anyways. So this is the tan of, well, what's 7 divided by 7? Anything divided by itself is 1. Right, so this is the tan of 1. Oh, no, it isn't. In order to get an angle, I use the inverse. So theta is equal to the inverse tan, so tan negative 1 of this 1, and theta is equal to 45. Now, if you're not, don't trust me on that one, punch it through your calculator. Take the tan inverse of 1, you should get 45 degrees. Okay, so theta in there, so we'll do a little arrow in there, this is 45 degrees. Now, once again, I know that this is also 45 degrees, but I usually do it last just to not confuse people. If you're not confused by that, then feel free to do it right now, but h squared equals, I use Pythagorean theorem next, and I do 7 squared plus 7 squared. Okay, this part I can do in my head, hope you can, that's 47, that's 47, so 98. And this part I take the root of 98, and this one you can guess at, because it's almost 100, and the root of 100 is 10, so this actually turns into, I think it was something like 9.899 when I did this video last time and had to scratch the whole thing and start it again. So. It rounds to 9.9. .9. So this side is 9.9, .9, and this is also 45 degrees. Hopefully, you, your teacher doesn't make you show the work for that. That's 45, that's 45, that's 90, that's 9.9. .9. Work, answer, work, answer. And the last answer, which doesn't really require any work, I usually give this five marks. Okay, so. That's how you solve the whole triangle. Go practice this a couple of times, and on to the next video.